In last lecture, we learned the external anatomy of the spinal cord and the brainstem, and we also learned the cross section of this uh, spinal cord. In this lecture, we will trace the whole ascending and descending passage located inside the uh, spinal cord and brainstem. Now you see there are a lot of uh, ascending and descending pathways, but we only focus on uh, some of them. We're not going to remember all of them. So for the descending or the motor pathway, we will focus on the cortical spinal tract, which include the lateral and anterior cortical uh, spinal tract. And for the ascending, or sensory pathway will focus on the uh, dorsal column medial and omniscuous, which means uh, which include the funicular scrotulates, the funicular cuneatus, and then we we'll also talk about the anterior lateral system, which include the spinal salamus uh, uh, tracts, and also we'll. I'll talk about the spinal cerebral tract. And we'll start with the dorsal funiculus. Funicula, again, is another name for a column. The dorsal funiculus is located between the two dorsal gray horns. If you can go back to the slide that that outlined with the two arrows where the dorsal gray horn is. And you have a right and a left dorsal gray horn. So all that white matter in between is the dorsal funiculus. And you have a right dorsal funiculus and a left dorsal funiculus separated by that dorsal median septum. <clears throat> now, depending on the level of the spinal cord that you're in, that a, the right or the left dorsal funiculus might contain two major uh, fascicles. In this case, this is at the cervical cross section of the spinal cord. And if you're T6 level or higher, you will have in the dorsal funiculus both a fasciculus gracilis, which is the one that's the most medial that the arrow is pointing to, and a fasciculus cuneatus, which is where the lateral area arrow is pointing to. So T6 level or above in the dorsal funiculus would be subdivided into a fasciculus gracilis and a fasciculus cuneatus. Both of those are, are axons carrying ascending axons carrying two-point discrimination, vibration sense, fine discriminatory touch, and conscious position sense. From the ipsilateral lower trunk and lower extremity, that's what the fasciculus gracilis is carrying, and from the upper trunk and upper extremity, which is what the fasciculus cuneatus is carrying. That's why if you're Above in the cervical area, you would have those sensations being carried, come in, coming in from the upper extremity and the upper trunk going up the fasciculus cuneatus. The lower extremity on that side and the lower trunk are carrying those sensations up through the fasciculus gracilis up to the medulla. This is a slide out of your textbook that kind of shows it pretty well. The bottom arrow showing those sensations coming from the foot, and you see it's traveling up through the fasciculus gracilis to get up to the medulla. And the hand arrow is showing those sensations coming into the spinal cord and going up the fasciculus cuneatus to get to the medulla. So the dorsal column medial lamniscus pathway, the DCML, or we can call it 
posterior column medial lamniscus pathway uh, PCM, PCML. Uh, this is a sensory pathway uh, of the central nervous system. And uh, the function of it is to collect the uh, or convey the sensation of a uh, fine touch vibration, uh, two point discrimination or preperception uh, from the skin or the uh, joint. So um, these uh, sensory, these um, uh, sensory will be transmitted uh, to the uh, primary uh, somatory cortex in the pre post central gyrus of the parietal lobe. So the receptor of this um, pathway is um, the cutaneous receptors, the muscle spindle, and the gorge tendon organs inside the joint. So the primary tract which compose this pathway is a funiculus gracilis and the funiculus cuneatus. In order to learn these pathways, we use usually use the picture uh, in the right side, and uh, you can see on the top it's a frontal slice of the cortex, and then we have the cross section from the different level uh, in the brainstem or the spinal cord. Okay, let's look at the DCML pathway. We know that the sensory pathway was formed by three neuron cells, right? So the, where's the first order neurons? The first order neurons is the, located in the lower level of the neural system, so it's more peripherally. So the cell body located inside the dorsal root ganglion which I showed in this picture. And uh, you remember that when we learn these uh, spinal cord segments, there's a bump on the uh, dorsal root, and um, we call it dorsal root ganglion. Uh, the dendrites of these um, first order neurons, which goes to the skin, goes to the joint, and uh, which form the sensory receptors. And then the axons, or the central process of this uh, first order neurons, which are ascend ascending um, in the same side, like, uh, or we can call it ipsilaterally, ascends ipsilaterally from the inside the posterior column, which forms the funiculus cuneatus or funiculus gracilis. Then the first order neurons, the axons, kept ascending inside the posterior column uh, and then uh, reached to the uh, brainstem, the uh, medulla level. And you remember we learned there are um, nucleus gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus. So here you have the second order neurons. And then the uh, axons synapse with the sector order neurons. And then the axons of the second order neurons and then they crossed to the opposite side. And uh, we call this internal accurate fibers. And then these fibers turn and uh, keep it ascending to the pounds, to the mid-brain, uh, mid and we call this fibers medial laminiscus. Here is a cross-section of the medulla and uh, let you have a um, closer look of the second-order neurons. And uh, you can see 
the second order neurons. The cell body loca located in the nucleus and which labels the lower limb and the upper limb in the lateral side, the lower limb uh, on the middle side. And you can see the axons cross to the other side. We call this internal accurate fibers, and then uh, which uh, ascending towards the pons, which form the medial lemniscus. So this is um, the picture from last lecture. You remember this is the poster view of the medulla. So you can see uh, there are both on the posterior side of the medulla and uh, under these bulbs, bulbs uh, you can find this uh, um, nucleus cuneate and nucleus grassless. Now let's move to the uh, third order neurons. The third order neurons located in the thalamus. So the ventral posterior lateral nucleus, the VPL of the thalamus, and then the axons of the third order neurons that keep ascending and reach to the um, primary uh, sensory uh, cortex, which is the postcentral gyrus. So here is a summary of the DCML pathway. Where is the cell body located? The first order neurons located in the dorsal ganglion, and the second order neurons located in the uh, nucleus, grassless, and uh, cuneatus. And the third order neurons located inside the thalamus. And uh, the destination of this DCML pathway is the primary somatosensory cortex, the postcentral gyrus. And uh, where this DCML cross or the decussation site is the caudium medulla. And we call these uh, decussations internal accurate fibers. So there are some points, uh, very important point that you need to know about the DCML pathway. So because we, we know that there is a cross uh, during this uh, pathway. And so before the cross, and we call this uh, dorsal column fibers, and after cross, uh, they form this medial lemniscus. So that's why we call this DCML pathway. And uh, you also need to know that the difference between the uh, fasciculus grassless and uh, the uh, fasciculus cuneatus. The uh, uh, fasciculus grassless fibers carry the uh, sensory information from the lower body. And then the fasciculus, uh, fasciculus cuneator fibers carries the sensory information from the upper bodies. What happens when there are damage on the DCM of pathway? You remember there's uh, a cross or decussation um, happens um, on the uh, medulla level. So if uh, the damage happens above the decussation, above the uh, lower medulla. And uh, if uh, the damage happens in the right side, as the picture shows, and uh, the loss of the sensation will happen in the contralateral side. So the patient will lots of fine touch, lots of tooth discrimination, discriminative touch, and lots of the uh, proprioception. And then if the damage happens in one side below this the sensory decussation, 
because the cross haven't happened. So the sensory loss will happen, will be ipsilateral. That means if the damage has been left aside and uh, the sensory, the sensory or the uh, fine, fine touch or the proprioception uh, on the same side will lost. So the damage of the DCML will make the patient lose their uh, the uh, sensory information carries by this uh, DCML, which means they will lose their fine touch, the two-point discrimination, vibration, and uh, uh, also the uh, proprioception. So the patient could have ataxia, which means uh, lose their ability for the motor coordination, and uh, they could have Rundberg sign. So that means uh, when you ask the patient to put their feet together and uh, close their eyes, the patient will sway to one side. And uh, they could have this uh, astero-anosis. Uh, so that means the patient cannot uh, judge when they hold or, or uh, touch um, a object with their skin. So for example, if they ask them to close their eyes, give them a key, they don't know what is it. So join is a good method to describe or help you remember the pathway of the neural system. And so let's do two activities. First, uh, I will ask you to draw two neuron synapses on each other. And don't be panic, so the answer will be on the next slide. And the second one is, you can see uh, you have a spinal cord cross section, you have the medulla cross section, and you have a chrono section of from the uh, cortex, the cerebral cortex. So try to draw the DCML pathway. Again, the answer is on the next slide. Now uh, let's move to the uh, the other sensory or ascending pathways, the anterior lateral system, or we can call it ventral lateral system. So uh, here is a picture shows you the cross section of the spinal cord, and you can see uh, the tract which are labeled beach red with red color. This one is a uh, belongs to this ventral lateral system. And uh, the primary tract within this pathway is the spinal thalamic tract. And the function of this tract is the um, transmit the pain, temperature, and the crude touch from the skin. The sensory receptor is located in the skin, the free nerve endings. And uh, the location of this tract in the spinal cord is located in the anterior half of the lateral funiculus or the lateral column. So we know that the ascending pathway all have three other neurons. So where are the first order neurons in the, this pathway? So the first order neuron, the cell body, also located in the dorsal root ganglion, which I have labeled in the picture. And then the dendrites, the dendrites of this uh, neuron cell, is uh, uh, the sensory receptor. Uh, 
which is a free nerve ending, and then the axons sent from the dorsal root ganglion and uh, they enter the posterior horn of the spinal cord. And you can see the first order neurons after they enter the posterior horn of the spinal cord is synapse with the second order neurons. The cell body of the second order neurons located in the posterior horn of the spinal cord. And then the second um, order neurons, the axons of this uh, neuron, it cross over to the other side of the spinal cord through this anterior white chemistry. Try to remember where is it. And to the anterior lateral corner of the spinal cord. And uh, the decreasation or the cross usually occurs one or two uh, spinal nerve segment above the point uh, of the, the entry. And uh, the third order neurons with the cell body located in the uh, thalamus too. So it's in the VPL, the uh, ventral posterior lateral nucleus inside the thalamus. And uh, you can see the second um, near nerve, uh, second order neurons, the axons. When these axons reached the uh, uh, VPL, and uh, you can see it got CMFs with the third neurons, and then the axons of the third neurons uh, travels to the cortex. So this, these uh, cortex include the uh, posterior central gyrus, the insula, and uh, some other areas. So here's a summary of the uh, anterior lateral system or the spinal thalamic tract uh, versus neurons. So the first order neurons located in the dorsal root ganglion, and the second order uh, neurons, the cell body, located in the dorsal horn, and uh, the third order neurons located in the thalamus. And uh, the destination of this um, tract is the primary somatosensory cortex. And uh, the cross or the decussation, which happens within the one or two, like they can cross right away and then or they can ascend in one or two level and then they cross to the opposite side and it enters the uh, and uh, uh, through this uh, anterior white chemistry now let's try use this uh, picture to draw on spinal thalamic pathway. Now we come to the third ascending tract, the spinal cerebellar tract. And you can see in this picture, this tract can be, can, which includes the anterior and posterior part, um, it, which located in the lateral column and part of it located in the anterior column. So this tract carry non-conscious uh, proprioception from the uh, muscle spindle and the gorge tendon from the ipsilateral side. And then the sensory was sent to the same side of the uh, cerebellum and uh, the function of it to, is to help the uh, postural control and uh, the movement coordination. And these, uh, these tract uh, like 
um, have the property function too, because uh, these can help you with like when you stretched your muscle too long, too much, and these tract can initiate an inhibitory response, response. and also it ensure the muscle will not get overstretched. We have learned three ascending pathways. Now we move on the move to the uh, descending pathways. So from this picture, uh, this picture is a cross section of the spinal cord, and uh, you can see uh, the descending pathways was labeled in red color, and uh, you can see there are uh, lateral and uh, medial cortical spinal tract. And you have rubral spinal tract, and you have uh, vestibular spinal or tactal spinal and uh, like reticular spinal cord. But today we only focus on the cortical spinal tract. All these uh, descending pathways in the last uh, slides could help mediate motor functions which could uh, which could include the voluntary and involuntary movement they can uh, regulate the muscle tone can uh, uh, modulate the uh, spinal reflex and uh, they can regulate the uh, visceral functions and most of this uh, descending tract uh, only have two neuron connections. You remember the sensory pathways used to have three level, uh, three neuron cells. Now let's focus on cortical spinal pathway. So in, uh, this is a picture cross section of the spinal cord. You can see I labeled the cortical spinal pathway in red color. And you can see this uh, pathway includes two parts and um, the, um, the one which located in the posterior half of the lateral column uh, we call it lateral cortical spinal tract or we can call it pyramidal tract and then the small run, uh, uh, part of this uh, pathway located in the anterior column we call this anterior or ventral cortical spinal tract. And um, these two uh, tract com uh, compose this uh, cortical spinal pathway. And the function of these two tracts is different. The lateral cortical spinal tract uh, help with the voluntary movement of the limb, the upper limb and the lower limb. And uh, the anterior cortical spinal tract um, mediate the voluntary movement of the uh, trunk muscle or the girdle muscle. So we call this axial muscles. And uh, does this this pathway has sensory receptor? No, right, because uh, it's a motor pathway have rich, um, sensor receptors. The first order neurons of the cortical spinal pathway, the cell body, located in the uh, precentral gyrus, so located in the cortex. And um, so these neurons we also can call it upper motor neuron. And then uh, the axons of these uh, first order neurons travel through this. Uh, you can see in the right uh, pictures, and uh, these axons come down into through this uh, anterior brainstem, and uh, the first cross section is the midbrain. 
the second cross section is a pants, and uh, the third cross section is a metal. So it uh, passing through the uh, cerebral peduncle and uh, the basal pans and also the pyramid of the metal. And then you can see after the passing through the metal, Um, almost all these are uh, 85 percent of the fibers they cross to the opposite side so this cross fibers which forms this uh, pyramidal decoration which we have learned from last lecture so this is a review picture and you can see this is an anterior view of the brain stem and in the uh, medulla part, and you can see in the middle line, here the um, uh, middle sulcus, and you can see the pyramid in the, it's, it's uh, located in the both side of the middle line. And uh, you can see I labeled uh, with the yellow color, the pyramidal decoration which is formed by the cross sections, cross fibers. After cross it is uh, pyramidal decoration, these part of these uh, fibers come down through the spinal cord and forms this uh, lateral cortical spinal tract. That's the uh, almost 85% uh, of the fibers. And then you can see Part of this, uh, about 15% uh, of these fibers didn't cross at that level and it continue to come down and form this anterior corticospinal tract. And then, but this anterior corticospinal tract, finally they need to uh, cross to the opposite side too. And then, uh, these across happens at the level where they will synapse on the um, lower motor neurons. And uh, um, these fibers will go to the opposite side through the anterior white camera. Then all the upper order neurons will go to the uh, uh, and uh, finally synapse with the second order neurons. We also call it lower motor neurons. This lower motor neurons locate the cell body located in the anterior horn uh, of the spinal cord. And uh, uh, we know that inside the anterior horn, we have alpha motor neurons and gamma motor neurons. The gamma motor neurons, you know, which is the, the uh, muscle spindle and the alpha motor neurons uh, innovate the skeletal muscle. And then the uh, absence of this uh, second order neurons will go out, come out from the spinal cord through the ventral root of the spinal nerve, and then reach the uh, skeletal muscle. Here we come to the uh, uh, summary of the cortical spinal pathway. This uh, motor pathway uh, have only two neuron, uh, neurons in the whole pathway. So which is different from the sensory pathway? The sensory pathway have three neurons in the whole pathway. And uh, also this, uh, you should know this, uh, uh, most of these uh, uh, cortical spinal fibers uh, which deposit across uh, in the cardiomedulla and through this uh, at the pyramidal decoration level. And uh, the other 15% uh, of these fibers will stay in this uh, ipsilateral until they reach the level of the um, spinal cord. 
uh, where they will synapse with the lower motor neurons. And then what happens when there's uh, damage on the corticospinal pathway? And remember, we also have a cross. So if this um, damage happens above this uh, pyramidal decussation, because this uh, cross have, have, haven't happened, so the uh, loss of these uh, motor functions will happens in the contralateral side, which means if the damage happened in the right side, then you will loss of motor function on the lower part of the body. If um, this happened, this um, cortical spinal pathway uh, injury happens below the uh, pyramidal decussation and uh, the loss of the motor function will happen in the ipsilateral side. Now you can try to draw a uh, lateral cortical spinal pathway on this picture. Now try join anterior cortical or spinal pathway. Uh, besides of this uh, lateral and uh, anterior cortical spinal tract, we also have other descending tracts like rubral spinal tract. The function of it is to like uh, help with the movement of the contralateral limbs. And uh, uh, the uh, vestibular spinal tract, uh, which like, help with the uh, uh, position of the head and neck and help with the uh, balance. And then the uh, radical uh, spinal tract will help with this uh, automatic posture or the uh, gait-related movement. Now we have learned uh, three major pathways, which is the corticospinal pathway, the spinothalamic pathway, and the uh, DCML pathways. Um, so I just want to use this slide to help you to follow this pathways in the uh, spinal cord and the, the brainstem. So in the lower left picture, that is the cross section of the spinal cord. So I uh, labeled the uh, three pathway in different colors, and you can use this color to follow, use the uh, right, right, a picture which is a uh, cross section of the medulla, the pounds, and the midbrain. And you can find the same colored uh, pathways inside the spinal cord, inside the uh, brainstem.